This is the new Cooper Born, and it's a little bit like a German that's attending a Spanish lavish carnival. You see underneath the skin, this is the same car as the Volkswagen ID3. It's just that it's got a slightly weird and freaky Spanish mask on the front. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car. I'm gonna take it for a drive, show you around the interior, the exterior, see how practical it is. And of course, I'm gonna launch it. See how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Now let's talk about motors and batteries and all that kind of stuff. So the Cooper Born is rear wheel drive. So you can have it with 204 horsepower. You can get an e-boost model, which gives you an extra bit of performance for 30 seconds. So you can then have 231 horsepower. Wow. So battery wise, there's two choices. There's a 58 kilowatt hour battery version, which is supposed to do a claimed range of 260 miles. Though I've been driving this car and the long term average I achieved was 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And when you do the maths based on the battery pack, that works out to an actual real world range of 209 miles. If you go for the bigger battery pack, then you have 77 kilowatt hours. So that's supposed to do 340 miles on a charge. But once again, you're going to get quite a bit less than that. In terms of charging on a seven kilowatt wall charger, the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack will take you nine hours to fully charge, whereas it will take 12 hours with the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you're charging at a DC fast charger, the large battery pack can do it at 135 kilowatts, whereas the smaller one can only charge up to 120 kilowatts. And that's all you need to know about that. Now it's time to find out what the Cooper Born is like to drive. So like I said before, it's based on the VW ID3, but it's got a slightly sportier setup to make it a little bit more fun. So let's just chuck it into a corner and see how it goes round. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty good actually. Stays nice and flat in the bends. Definitely a bit sharper to drive than the VW ID3. A trade-off is that the suspension is a bit on the firmer side, but it's still comfy over bumps. Brakes, sometimes with electric cars, they can be a bit weird and jerky, but no, these are nice and progressive. And if you want to increase the amount of regen braking you get when you lift off the accelerator, you can just whack it into B mode and then you lift off and it brakes firmer. It's like you get this really effective engine braking. It never stops the car entirely. Look, 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 look. It slows it, slows it, slows it, but it will always just creep a little little bit. It's a shame, I like full on one pedal driving like you get in a Honda E. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Other than that though, real nice and easy car to drive in town. So visibility is good. These little extra windows there mean that you don't get too much of a blind spot from the thick pillars. The view at the back window is all right as well. I see what else is good, the turning circle. So I want to turn around and I'm going to try and do it in this space here. Can we do it? Can we do it? It's 10.2 meters. Maybe I can do a three point turn. Look, fine. Steering's nice and light, which helps with that. Ah, good. Really like this light bar here, the coppery badging of Cupra. You've got a diffuser there, but yeah, I think it's fake. It doesn't really do that much. And a massive roof spoiler. In fact, it's so big, it's more of an awning than a spoiler. Overall, I prefer the rear of this Cupra Bong compared to its sister car, the VW ID3. Down the sides, you've got this texture here. Nice alloy wheels. Starts at 18 inches, going up to these 20s. There's a plasticky bits for improved aerodynamics. Got these side skirts, which are very sporty and contrasting door mirrors are standard. High spec cars get blacked out rear windows. Shame you don't get blacked out front windows, but that's illegal in the UK. Moving to the front, which is where you have that mask. I'm not sure about the front end of this car. It just looks a little bit overdone. I prefer the front of the ID3, but do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Now the price of the Cooper Board starts at £35,000. In fact, look, here it is on car where you can see here. Now, if you want to check out the latest savings on various cars across various ranges, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go to Carway. You can also sell your current car through Carway, just upload some photos, give a brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car. Now, if you want to do all that at a later date, just simply Google, help me Carway, and we will help you. The overall layout of the inside of the Cooper Born is very similar to the VW ID3, like with this main central touchscreen where you operate most of the car's functions because you don't have any buttons down here. It does mean that you've got to control the heating using these slider switches, which isn't great because they're not backlit. You can't see them at night. It's a bit of a fiddle. Also, the infotainment system itself, it's reasonable to use. And in fact, it seems to work better than the 
version I used on the early ID3. That was a bit laggy, this seems to work a lot better. And you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both are wireless, so you just run that anyway. Now you've got this digital driver's display here, which is quite small, doesn't show that much information. It's got enough, but it feels a little bit tiddly by modern standards when you're used to like big screens. And it does move with your steering wheel when you move it back, which is good. What's not so good though, is that your drive select mode here is hidden by the steering wheel rim. And then your lights are hidden by the steering wheel rim and that drive select mode. So ergonomically, it's not brilliant. However, the design itself, I think, looks cooler than the interior of the ID3. I like the patterns here on the dash, the way it's shaped up here, the copper effect down here again, the way you have this big central tunnel, it makes you feel sporty because you're separated from the passenger. Someone's just text me. Also, the steering wheel design is nice. The suede material here on the armrest, nice and squidgy, and the one on the armrest here. It's just unfortunate that you can't actually lock the armrest a bit higher. You see, it's quite low down. There's a place for your mobile phone there, which is kind of handy, because then you can slide this forward so that you don't look at your phone and get distracted and then end up with a fine. You've got USB connectors here, USB-C. Also, under here, you've got your cup holders. Right? Big cup holders there and some more storage. Cover that back up. Back, back back up <laughs> down here you've got some big door bins so it's nice and practical then there's some other touches i like which just make this feel a little bit more sporty than id3 for instance you've got aluminium pedals and these mats they're sporty as well look the way you've got like this leatherette on them nice oh special mention for these seats once again covered in this like suede effect really nice body hugging seats very comfy on longer journeys and they grip you quite well when you go around corners so it's also good cruising on the motorway, seats are comfortable, the suspension just irons out undulations in the road when you're going quicker. One thing you do notice though is you do get a little bit of wind noise from around here, a bit more than I'd expect. Other than that though, I'm impressed with how this car drives. Here in the back of the Cooper Bourne, it's pretty spacious, look, lots of headroom, the room's good as well, you can slide your feet out under the seat in front, the floor's flat, so there's plenty of foot room, so if you need to carry three people at once, actually the middle seat is quite comfy and there's enough foot space. The issue is that the body's quite narrow, so the two people on the outer seats get pushed out and they end up banging their heads against there, which isn't great, so overall it's not brilliant for carrying three people in the back. And you can't even carry three people in the back if you have the 77 kilowatt hour battery version because the extra batteries go in this area here. So if you want to carry three people in the back and have a better range, you might want to check out a Tesla Model 3 because the high capacity version of this car is similar price anyhow to the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below, you can watch my in-depth video review of the Tesla Model 3 and see why I think it is probably still the best electric car you can buy. Anyhow, there's still plenty to like about this. For instance, look, you've got a big juicy armrest there, cup holders in it, so you didn't put your arm in it, but still better than nothing and you have some through loading as well which is handy the isofix anchor points here just flip down so it's very very easy to get at so it's nice and simple to just mount the seat in here and there's enough room for one of those rear facing seats you've got some pockets on the seat back so the door bins are nice and large look even in the back and you've got two usb c's for charging there as well overall pretty good let's check out the boots on the cupra born so the capacity is 385 litres, which is all right. It's a nice square shape as well. However, a high and ionic fires boot capacity is 527 litres, so quite a bit bigger. And if that matters to you, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to check out my in-depth video review of that car. Now, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of a load lip to lift this heavy sack over. And when I fold down the rear seats, you'll notice get quite a big ridge so if you want to hoik your heavy sack all the way to the front it's a little bit tricky so if you look closer you'll notice here there's this ridge and that's because you can actually get an optional false floor which raises the boot floor up so you don't have that problem it's annoying though that it's 325 pounds why isn't it standard anyhow that brings me on to five other annoying things about the cupra born if you want to operate the rear windows from the driver's seat, you have to first press this button to toggle these switches so they are operating the back windows, and then you can put them down or up as you desire. I don't know why they've done that to save space or money, but can't we just have individual buttons? It's just so much easier and takes less thought process when you're driving. Obviously, because this is an electric car, there's no internal combustion engine there, and the motor's at the back. You've got some extra storage space here underneath the bonnet, haven't you? 
Maybe you can store some things in those. Why is there no front boot? I like some fruit on my electric car. Disappointing. There only seems to be half a glove box. Where, where's the rest of it? Love. That's a bit shit. This side skirt looks cool, but when you have passengers getting in that who aren't familiar with the car, they sometimes end up just like banging their shin against it and they hate you for it. Believe me, it's happened to my friend. They're still not talking to me. The brakes can be quite creaky when you're creeping along in traffic. What the heck is that all about? The location of the volume controls on the steering wheel and the fact that the buttons are sensitive means that sometimes when you're driving along like that, you can accidentally turn up the volume. Get some nerve. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. You can get a real nice, clear and simple heads-up display with this car and it actually incorporates the lane departure warning so it draws lines on the road which says where you should be going to steer back into your lane. It's clever. You get true keyless go. You see, you don't even have to press the starter button. You can get in, put your seatbelt on, like that, foot on the brake, whack it into drive and off you go. All models get ambient lighting as standard. Look, you've got various different colours and shades and they even name them for you. Look, cold, active, wellness, warm, individual, which obviously you can like set up yourself. Oh, there, there, there we go, look, with these different colours. Uh, into the different areas. These little guides here keep the rear seat belts in place so that they don't snag when you fold down the back seats. Look, ah, oh, lovely. You get isofix angle points on the front passenger seat as well as the two outer seats in the rear. Handy if you've got triplets or you like to keep your baby close to you when you're driving, so you keep an eye on it. Also, I've noticed that this particular model has the upgraded massage seats, which is quite cool. According to Cooper, this 204 horsepower version of the Bourne should be able to do 0-60 in 7.3 seconds, but I'm going to find out for myself using my specialist timing gear up here. Let's go. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We are going to do a 6.7. I'll take that. It's a good result. Finally then, I'm going to do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. See how long it takes the car to stop. What is the braking distance? Here we go, 60 miles an hour, bang on. So it took 33 meters to stop from 60 miles an hour, which is actually pretty decent. So then what's my final verdict on the Cooper Bourne? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Cooper Bourne. You know, there are similar price electric cars which are a bit more practical and a bit quicker, but it's still a really good all-round choice. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to Carway to see how much you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.